Let's consider the use of a coronary artery calcium, or CAC score, obtained with a CT heart scan as a tracking tool. That is a way to track the rise or decline of your coronary calcium score that tells you whether your prevention efforts are working or not. Now, the odd thing about all this is that, yes, we know with good confidence, very good evidence, that your coronary calcium score is the best predictor of a future that could involve heart attack, sudden cardiac death, or the development of symptoms like angina or chest pain that necessitates implantation of stents, bypass surgery, and other procedures. We call them revascularization procedures, re restoration of the vascular blood flow. Well, the coronary calcium score is by far the best predictor. Cholesterol is not. Cholesterol, whether it's total cholesterol or LDL cholesterol, is actually a very lousy predictor. If your total cholesterol is 240, will you have a heart attack tomorrow, next week, next year, never? You can't tell. It's virtually useless because it's not a reliable marker for cardiovascular disease. It's a crude, outdated marker that should have been discarded decades ago. The coronary calcium score, while not perfect, and I'm always surprised the people who point out that it's not perfect, but it's pretty darn good, is the best predictor by a long stretch. The higher your score, the more likely you are to have those kinds of events like heart attack, etc. If you do nothing. Now, of course, we're not here to do nothing, and we help publish these data many years ago. There's about a dozen studies that now tell us several things. One. We quantify calcium because we can see it. We can precisely quantify it. It's a reflection of total atherosclerotic plaque. Some people say, well, we don't care about the calcium because that's the hard plaque. No, calcium is an index of total plaque. The soft elements, the fibrous elements, and the calcific or hard components. It's an index of all of them. That's why we track calcium. It's easy to quantify. So the higher your score, the more likely bad things are to happen. Well, ironically, most of my colleagues will tell you, once you've had a coronary calcium score, don't do it again. Why would they say that? Well, because their only solution does not work. That is a statin cholesterol drug, like a high dose of Lipitor or, or equivalent. They do not slow the progression of your coronary calcium score. So if you did nothing, which is not wise, right? and your score, say, is 400 at the start, which is very high, normal is zero, a year later, the score is going to be 25% higher, or 500. Another year later, another 25% higher, 625, and, and so on. And as you approach the 800, 1,000, that range, the likelihood of heart attack, death, and those bad things becomes almost inevitable. So at a score of 400, you're just maybe six or seven years away from something bad happening to you if you did nothing. So what if you did follow the doctor's recommendations and went on a high dose of a statin cholesterol drug, took a baby aspirin, cut the fat and saturated fat in your diet, and engaged in an exercise program? How fast will the coronary calcium score go up? 25% per year or more. In fact, there are several studies that now tell us that the calcium score increases faster. Now, my colleagues who've been brainwashed by the pharmaceutical industry into thinking that statin drugs are miraculous, and they are not, best case scenario, they do just a little bit. They reduce some of the lipoproteins a little bit. They call it LDL cholesterol because they don't understand that as heart disease has nothing to do with cholesterol. It's about the lipoproteins, the fat-carrying proteins in the bloodstream, that is fats that are made aqueous soluble by the addition of proteins. Those are the particles that cause heart disease, not this indirect crude surrogate called LDL cholesterol. So statin drugs do not work to slow the progression of cardiac calcium scores. In fact, they accelerate them modestly. And my colleagues apologize for this by saying, well, the calcium is a sign that you've stabilized plaque. They made that up. There's no such evidence. <laughs> In fact, anyone who's done a lot of intracoronary ultrasound, like I have over the years, where you insert a probe into the actual arteries in the heart and you make cross-sectional images, 
Anybody who does a lot of that will tell you, calcium is not a predictable thing. It occurs in all different kinds of shapes, sizes, configurations. Sometimes it could stabilize certain portions of the plaque. Sometimes it causes it to be less stable. So this idea that calcium accumulation from a statin drug is somehow beneficial is patent nonsense. So the truth of it is, that's why they tell you, don't do the scan again, because they don't know how to put a stop to the 25% per year. So they actually said this. Some of the so-called experts actually said this. Well, don't repeat the scan because you can't put a stop to its inevitable rise. Just wait for them to have an event. Heart attack, sudden cardiac death, resuscitation, development of symptoms that leads to a procedure. They actually said that. So I'm going to tell you otherwise. The coronary artery calcium score is a wonderful, the ultimate tracking tool. And know that, you, yes, you can stop the progression of your score or put a stop to it or even reduce your score. I've done it many, many times. Have published some of these data also. Now, but it requires a very different effort than the silly things that conventional uh, solutions provide, like reducing cholesterol. Instead, we're going to follow a diet that reduces or eliminates the provocation of formation of very low-density lipoproteins, VLDL, that in turn lead to small LDL. Those two lipoproteins are the causes for coronary disease, VLDL and small LDL. Not my speculation, 55 clinical trials have validated the use of these measures. Why don't you hear more about it? Because there's no pharmaceutical for it. There's nobody in a three-piece suit or a nice mini skirt coming to the doctor's office telling the doctor to use this, some drug, because there is no drug. It's purely dietary. And then we also do things like address vitamin D, which is very important because that's what controls calcium deposition or removal. Omega-3 fatty acids at higher doses, north of 3,300 milligrams of EPA and DHA per day. We now know facilitates regression, mostly of the fatty rupture prone elements of atherosclerotic plaque. So fish oil, now absolutely confident, is a major component of your effort to prevent heart disease. And best as a combination of EPA and DHA. If you, if your doctor was silly enough to prescribe the uh, EPA alone, as comes in some pharmaceutical forms, you're going to have to take fit regular fish oil to get the DHA to protect your brain and cognitive health. That's how dumb it is to take just EPA. You want EPA and DHA. EPA for its cardiovascular benefits, DHA for its cardiovascular and cognitive health benefits. So get both, typically in three to two ratio. That's how it occurs in most fish. We also address iodine uh, because that's the major control over your thyroid status and magnesium because you drink filtered water that removed all magnesium and you eat cultivated plants, vegetables and fruits that lack magnesium. So we supplement magnesium. Then we also address colonic dysbiosis or even more importantly, SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Because if you have coronary disease, there's a very high likelihood that you also have SIBO. That is, the overproliferation of fecal microbes in the colon where they started that then ascended into the 24 feet of small intestine where they don't belong. And when you have fecal microbes infesting this 24 feet of small intestine, they live and die very rapidly, living only hours at a time, shed their toxic components that gain access to the bloodstream. That's called endotoxemia, a major driver of coronary plaque growth, calcium score growth, of plaque rupture, of other heart conditions like atrial fibrillation and cardiomyopathies, heart muscle diseases, uh, and it drives inflammation and insulin resistance, the two driving factors that make VLDL and small LDL worse. So it's a simple approach. It's diet, removing the foods that cause VLDL and small LDL, wheat, grains, and sugars, address insulin resistance and inflammation with those four nutrients, vitamin D, magnesium, iodine, omega-3 fatty acids, then address disrupted clonic dysbiosis and SIBO. And we do that last one, by the way, using my method of making what I call SIBO yogurt. Now that recipe is described in my super gut book. It's also in my websites and blogs. The blog is williamdavismd.com. My membership website where we discuss these things live 
is innercircle.drdavisinfinitehealth.com. You can get the whole recipe there. But it's, it's based on the idea that we're going to get three microbes, a strain of Lactobacillus rotari, a strain of Lactobacillus gasseri, and now Bacillus subtilis in the updated recipe. I choose those three because those either colonize or germinate in the small intestine as well as the colon, where they produce bacteriocins, natural antibiotics that kill those overproliferated fecal microbes and thereby reduce the endotoxemia that drives coronary disease risk and expansion of your coronary calcium score. So yes, you can reduce, you can stop the progression or reduce your coronary artery calcium score. It's really not that difficult, involves no drugs, does not involve such things as reducing saturated fat. It's a completely different approach, but based on logic and on science. And you know what? Because you have access to this terrific tracking tool called the coronary artery calcium score. So you get a baseline and then you repeat it a year or two later or so. Timing is not all that tight, but just repeat it. And you can tell, you'll get feedback to tell you whether your preventive efforts are working or not. Did your score stay the same? So a great start, just make some improvements to get even further and uh, reduce the score. If the score goes up, re-examine your program, make it better, add some things. We can talk about what that means if you come to my meetups. Or what if your score goes from say 500 to 235? That's a time to break out a bottle of champagne and celebrate because you have beaten heart disease. Just gotta stay in the program forever to make sure you maintain that. So you have access to a way to prove whether or not the approach you choose works. You could even do a year of statin drug and other conventional things and watch the score go up as it inevitably does. Or you could choose a program that stacks the odds in your favor of putting a stop to the rise in the CAC score or even achieves regression.